It is not the same now as it was before. We are changed in certain ways and will be changed in many more. And there is nothing we can do to stop the shift now it has started. To unlive the awful things we lived, repatriate the parted. We have lost them and their loss will mark us. Shade these memories darkly and remind us to remember always where our nation's heart is. It is not, despite what red tops yell, in drawing tight the borders, nor does it have anything to do with the EU. I guarantee it's far from all the chaos and disorder that sit in the day the country turned a sickly shade of blue. Since then our veins have coursed with a peculiar infection, a pathogen that's left us lost and grasping for direction, choking in the aftermath of endless failed elections and all the desperate introspection that ensues. This scruffy tosser doesn't give a single fuck about your life. He'd throw his closest pals beneath the bus with fiction on the side, steer your country headlong off a cliff to get a better job. Quoting lines from long dead tongues while penning toxic diatribes, his mates will gather close and spin his nonsense round like washing lines, certain if they stood their ground there wouldn't be a second time. This callous band have picked apart the things that once made Britain great, turned the nation once united into disunited states, and close their eyes and plug their ears while all around them turns to ruin, happy to expound the myth. It's all those dodgy migrants doing. Ten long years of cutting spending, bleeding dry your NHS and dragging out the never-ending shambles of a Brexit mess obsessed with taking back control. A quality that's sorely missing in a man whose wedding tackles worn out from illicit fishing. Dipping bait in countless lakes like vows are only made to break. An overweight Lothario, all guts and morning glory. A rake who fibs and fabricates with every laboured breath he takes, regardless of the mess he makes. A cock and two balls story. Three affairs and one scorned wife, and not a shred of class in sight, despite the Oxbridge education, coupled with the swanky life of luxury, afforded those who sit and watch from lofty heights, while those they're supposed to lead and govern do their best to sleep at night. But it's hard to get a good eight hours, working zero hour shifts and trying to scrape a life together in between the food bank trips and praying that your matchbox tower block home stays upright while you snooze instead of ending up another tragic scrolling headline on the early evening news. It's time we finally said enough. The joke has gone on far too long. The bluster and the bluff of bastards bent on running Britain wrong with stunning lack of moral fibre, drumming up a fervent fear of any one or thing outside of England's dreamed up old frontiers. We all have been through such a lot. And still, this isn't quite the end. But while we're stuck with what we've got, we might as well just make pretend. Cause they've got nothing else to offer. No actual ways for us to mend. All the damage done to structures upon which we all depend. So remember, before they've truly fucked us, that governments are made to bend. And though the jester jokes, he's pucked us, made all that we believe suspend. Replaced our lives with tricks and rancor, no lows to which he won't descend. The Tories are a national cancer, and Boris Johnson's not your friend.